Hey guys, so today we're going to look at having the Blur Book Creator plugin for InDesign. So if you, to start off, you just got to download it from their website. So if you go on blurb.com and then come to their website, go to Create, Creation and Layout Tools. So here they have a bunch of different tools that you can use. The one we're looking for is this one, the Adobe InDesign plugin. So you just go here, download the plugin, you sign in, and then it'll ask you to choose which version of InDesign you have. I have the Creative Cloud, so click that one, then you download that. It downloads really fast, you just open that up, install the one that you need, um, and then to see where it goes, you just launch InDesign. And now it's important to start a file if you know the end goal is to print using Blurb to start your document using this plugin. What that's going to do is set it all up for you so that you know there are no issues. So rather than creating a new one here or opening, you want to start off with a blank file. You go File, and you come down here to Blur Book Creator. So this will only be here if you've already downloaded the, bl the this, the Blur Book Creator. So once you have it, you can open that up. And this is where you would start your file. So anytime you want to start a new book, or portfolio or anything that you know you're going to print through blurb you start it off here so you obviously can't check anything because you haven't even started a book once you start one you click here you create new book and you'll see it's here it's untitled so if you give it a title and you can call this one portfolio one it will pop up here as you work and create more books, they'll all be here. So you can always go back and look at the settings you had. Author, you can put whatever you want here. I'll put me. Book size. So here, what's really nice about this plugin is it's going to already set up your, your book to be the right size that they can actually print. So you never have to worry about, oh man, I'm at the end of my project. I want to send it to print and now I realize that they don't support the file size that I, I've been using the whole time. That would be a huge issue because now you have to reformat all your pages and, and sometimes your layouts don't work so you have to redo them. So um, for like an architectural portfolio I really like the, the landscape 10 by 8. Um, some people like doing them portrait. It really depends on what kind of um, work you want to display. Um, the small 7 by 7 square is pretty good too. That has a different feel. Um, I think these, unless you have really big work and you want to show them really large, like large images or rendering things like that, you tend to, these tend to be a little bit too big. But obviously, you can pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to start off with this one. Um, choose a paper type. Oh, if you check this, it'll create an ISBN number for you so that you can be part of that. And um, if you're just making a portfolio just to have, you don't really need that. Um, the paper type, this lets you pick from their papers that they offer and see some of these I can't get now because I've chosen already 8 by 10. So that's the other thing that's nice. There's no combination you can make using this, this book creator that won't actually be able to be printed. Um, so you know based off the choice choices that you make, you're picking something that you can get. Um, I like this one because it's not too glossy and it's not too flat and it has like a nice quality when you look at your images, especially when you have like nice detailed drawings or uh, bright colors, things like that. It tends to print really nice. Um, cover type, you, you have a few options that you can choose. Um, soft cover, perfect bound is, is obviously um, a soft cover. And this is the kind of binding you typically see in books. Um, it's just, there's nothing on the edge. It's just like a, they put glue and like, I guess like heat seal it. Uh, hardcover, you have two options. Um, you have image wrap and then dust jacket. So dust jacket is basically like that piece of paper that goes around. And so you would you would design the cover differently based off of that because you have a little piece that wraps around on the inside. Um, both of these are hardcover. So if that's what you want, you would choose that. Um, I'm going to keep these soft cover for now. Once you do that, it starts to create some things down here. Um, number of pages. You need 20 minimum, but you can always see here it says you can always add pages using just a typical InDesign. You don't have to adjust them here and then come back and change it. So what's important is 
the number of pages has to be set in order for you to design the cover. The cover is going to wrap on one side, you'll have the front cover, then you have the back cover on the other side, and then you have the little gap in between that becomes basically the spine of the book. So if you wanted to write like your name or the title of the book on the spine, you would do that on the cover. And the more pages you have, the thicker your spine will be. So if you notice, it's going to want to generate two different file templates. One is for the pages. So this is the content where you'd be doing like all your work. And then there's a separate InDesign file that will be created for the cover. And it gives you a note down here that you can't create this one until you know how many pages total you're going to have in your, in your book. So to start off, let's create a new pages template. So I'm going to create this and then it'll ask you where do you want to save this. So I'm just going to save this to my desktop for now. But if you have a spot you like to use, just go ahead, put it here. You can name it whatever you want. And then it automatically puts pages because the important thing is this is the pages file. So you'll also have another file that's for the same book, but it will say cover here. So you save and then it's automatically going to start creating them based off of what we had set before. So if you want to change any of this, you still can. You can just, here if you look, you have open page template. You can update the location. So, so let's say you move where you saved and it doesn't find it. You can click here and navigate to it. Or you can make a new one that will replace the one you, you have now. So I noticed that that's a vertical layout. So let's say I wanted to change that to a horizontal one. Um, I would go here and say, change this to landscape 10 by eight. It tells you you can't change because you already created a page template. If you need a book of a different size, please create a new book. So that, let's see if this lets you do. So you can make a new one this way, but it's gonna keep those, or you could create a new book and do it the other way. So the cover, you'll get the notifications telling you you want to wait till the end till you know how many pages you have. Um, let's just say I knew this was how many I wanted. I'll create the cover now. So this would typically be the last thing you do at the end. So and then down here it's showing you based off of all these settings, this is how much one book will cost. If you want to put the blurb logo like on the back, like in the back of your book, they'll add it and they give you like a discount. Um, if not, they just charge a normal price. Um, you can change this to different things if you want. And then how many do you want to order? So the more books you order, the bigger discount you get. Um, I've never ordered anything over the first one, but if you're printing something for like mass print or something like that, you can do that. Um, once you've uploaded onto Blurb, I think they'll host the book for 14 days and that you can order it at any time. And then once you've ordered it, you can set up on the website um, ways for people to buy this book. So if you wanted to sell it, say it was like a really good book and you want people to buy it, you can do that. Um, so that will be here once we're ready. So let me just go into the book now. So I can close this and this is showing you here what we have. So it's created, so let me close this. So if I look at the pages, it's actually created all these pages, 24 pages like we said, and they're already the right size. So if I change this to inches, you can see that it's eight by 10. So this first page that you see here isn't your cover. That's just the first page you'll see once you open. And there's a bunch of stuff on it. So don't worry about all this because you're not actually going to see it. If you go to your layers, so I don't have my layers here, so you can always find them here under window layers. Put that there. So this is where all that stuff is on. And it gives you a little note that says these are the instructions and this layer will not print. So that's a non-printing layer. So even if you don't turn it off, that it's not going to, you're never going to see this. And it's telling you here what it is. So the important thing to note is 
the gray here and this purple line or magenta as it says that's the safe boundary so if you have text or anything that you don't want to get cropped when they print the book it's important to make sure it's within this boundary on any page um, in the middle here is the gutter so anything that goes into there there's a chance you won't be able to see it so if you had text coming across there's a chance that this may get cropped off or it goes inside the seam of the book and you don't see it. Same is true on the outside. What's going to happen is this red line is where they want you. This is called the bleed line. So um, the black is the like actual size of what your page is. If you wanted to create a layout that has something going to the edge of the page and, and what that's called a full bleed so that it just comes off the edge of the page and there's no white space it just gets cut off you have to actually drag it so let me just make a shape you would have to um, let's just give this a color You actually have to drag this out not to here that would be if you didn't want it to get cut off this doesn't actually guarantee that it will be full bleed in order for you to to know that it's going to be full bleed they ask you to pull it to this red line so what's going to happen is they're going to print this and then it's actually going to be a little bit bigger and then they'll come back and cut it along this line so if you accidentally had this right on that edge and the true cut was like a little bit over then you you'll end up with that and you'll see a little white gap so if you want full bleed you have to drag it all the way um, if you don't want to see all these things you just turn them off with the layers and then you can adjust this as much as you want you can add more pages under pages you can add new you just add a bunch of pages you can work on it delete pages out as long as you remember that over here under the blur book creator your minimum is 20 and in this setup I can go up to 240 pages um, so I'm gonna create the cover now so let's say I know this is how many pages I want I'm gonna create the cover it says make sure you're finished design your pages so you have the final page count you can still change what's on the page as long as you don't add or subtract them um, portfolio on cover save so now here's my cover so it's important to know that this is just as if you took your book opened it all the way and laid it flat on the table so the front cover is actually on the right the back cover is on the left and then you have the little spine there so this is the part that will change depending on how many pages you have if you have 100 pages it might be twice as big or four times as big and if you only had 20 it might just be this wide um, you also want to make sure to leave your safe yourself a little safe area because I found through printing probably like 20 of these books that you want to center the words that you put here and make sure they're like leaving a little gap because this gutter sometimes it shifts a little bit and then your your word isn't nice and centered on here and it might overlap a little bit onto the front cover or the back cover and, and it just doesn't look right so make sure you leave a little bit of white space around anything that you put here um, and so that's pretty much the basics to the blur plugin for InDesign. Um, once you're totally done, let's say I was done, you would save and then you would go back to here and once they're all done, you make sure there's no errors and everything, you click here, upload book. It'll say both documents will be saved, say yes, it saves them and it does this pre-flight check. So it's gonna go through, oh look great, you passed everything. Your book's PDF will now be open for you to review. So it's going to print a PDF for you. And then you need to look at it and make sure that everything on it is correct. Obviously, I just did a blank document, so there's nothing. You can see here that it's getting full bleed, which is nice. That was what we did. That's pretty much the only page we did. Um, so go away. So that's pretty much the first step. And once you're happy with that, I think you just close it. Oh, and then also here's the cover. So you would see here your cover. So however we design that. And notice that it doesn't print all that extra stuff. So if you're happy, 
you would say upload book and it's going to send it straight to their website and then you just order it or if you say no I'm not I'm not ready you say keep working and then you can adjust it change things about whatever you want and then that's pretty much it um, one thing to note we just did all three steps we created the book well technically four steps we created it made the two different files and then ordered it but in reality you'll set up step one two and the pages for step three and it may be like a month or two before you create the cover because that's just your time working on the portfolio and everything ready and then once you've done the cover that's usually the last thing you do and then you order it right away um, typically they take about a week or two weeks if it's uh, like they're busy um, to get you the prints um, but yeah if you have any questions just let me know either here in the comments or however else you want to ask.